All right, thanks for watching. And today, as practice with the definition of continuity, I will show that even though those two functions are very similar, the first one, x squared sine of one over x, is continuous at zero, whereas one over x sine of one over x squared is discontinuous at zero. So let's do the first one. So define f of x to be x squared sine of one over x. If x is not equal to zero, then zero if x equals to zero. So what this function looks like, sine is between minus one and one. So this function is actually squeezed between two parabolas. So this is a parabola x squared, and this is the parabola minus x squared. And basically this function is squeezed between the two, like, woo, looks like that. So uh, x squared sine of one over x. Okay. And in fact, yes, you can use the squeeze theorem to find the limit, but weirdly in this book, we define continuity before defining limits. So let's just use it using the definition of continuity. So let's show f is continuous at zero. And for this, let's just use the epsilon delta definition. So step one, let's just do some scratch work. All right, so let's try to estimate f of x and f of zero. So again, here x naught is zero. So let's calculate f of x minus f of zero. That is by definition x squared sine of one over x minus zero. And so just absolute value of x squared sine of one over x, which just becomes x squared sine of one over x. And we don't know what sine of one over x is, but we know it is less than or equal to one. So an absolute value, this becomes less than or equal to x squared. And what we want we want this to be less than epsilon. And this just implies that x squared is less than epsilon, so x is between minus uh, square root of epsilon and square root of epsilon. So in other words, absolute value of x is less than square root of epsilon. And this is the delta that we want. Okay, so now let's do our actual proof. So, uh, step two. So let epsilon be given. Let delta be square root of ep epsilon. Then, if, again, here x minus x naught, which is x minus zero, is less than delta, then we basically get x is less than delta, which is square root of epsilon. And so, so f of x minus f of not zero, with, again, by the same idea, this is x squared, absolute value of sine of one over x. And then this becomes less than or equal to x squared times one, one, which is x squared, but remember, uh, absolute value of x is less than uh, square root of epsilon, so x squared is less than square root of epsilon squared, which is epsilon. And then you're done. So let epsilon be given, then there is a delta such that if x minus zero is less than delta, then f of x minus f of zero is less than epsilon. So the point is the function is continuous. But now, let's look at the other function. So example two. Again, looks very similar, but f of x is, I believe was it, yeah, one over x sine of one over x squared. Okay. 
n if x is not equal to 0. And then, okay, it doesn't matter what we define it actually here. 0 if x is 0. Now, what this looks like, so sine is between minus 1 and 1. So this function is between minus 1 over x and 1 over x. So it actually looks like that. So if this is 1 over x and this is minus 1 over x, it looks like huge. Shoo! Like this. So this is f of x. At least for positive x, well, for negative x is the same thing. So kind of like waves, radio waves, I think sometimes you see uh, on TV or maybe uh, something else. All right, and then here what we want to show, show that f is not continuous. Now you could do it with epsilon delta, but here's actually easier to do it with the sequence definition. Whereas for example, one it was harder to do with the sequence definition. So what we want to do, we want to find xn converging to 0. So here we want to show it's not continuous at 0. But f of xn, which again, assume xn is non-zero. So uh, it's 1 over xn sine of 1 over xn squared uh, does not go to 0. Okay, now this sign term is a little bit annoying. So let's try to eliminate this. And in particular, first of all, let's choose xn that goes to zero, but that sign of this is one. Okay, so in other words, you want this to be one. We don't have to want to do this, but like, uh, it makes it easier. Now, notice, when is sine of 1 over x squared equal one, equals to 1? So notice, general sine of something equals 1. Well, that only happens for pi over 2 plus even multiples of pi. So this gives you 1 over x squared. It's pi over 2 plus, well, usually 2 pi m but let's use, use n here, 2 pi n, and then x squared is 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and that gives you x is plus or minus square root of 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. All right, and this suggests maybe, again, we don't know if it works, but let's just hope to use xn, so let xn be square root of 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Where again, n is a natural number. Then, notice the following. What well, can you tell me about this sequence? Well, if n goes to infinity... xn goes to, really, square root of 1 over pi over 2 plus infinity, which is just 1 over infinity, which is 0. But, let's see, what about f of xn? Remember, that becomes 1 over xn sine of 1 over xn squared. So again, this is our function here sine of dot 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 and essentially what is xn it shows all the peaks of those functions it's a it's almost a peak a chew and where was i okay and then <laughs> in particular remember by definition we know sine of this is one so you're just left with one over xn okay which is one over the square root pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So it's a 1 over the square root of 1 over a pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, which you can really rewrite as square root of pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. But this goes to infinity. 
And in particular, even though xn goes to zero, f of xn does not go to f of zero, which is infinity. And therefore, uh, the function is not continuous using the sequential definition of continuity. So even though the functions look similar, they're actually very different. Um, all right, uh, thank you very much.